Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to share some quick ways to fix uh, some common mesh fusion issues. I began this mesh fusion form as a, sort of a quick warm-up project, uh, but it presented some uh, problems that I believe every mesh fusion artist should know how to address. Uh, so these tips uh, should be applicable to anyone who uses mesh fusion. Uh, they might seem like small uh, little uh, tips, but uh, I think they'll be I think they'll be helpful. So at first glance, this might seem uh, pretty good, but if I uh, enable the wireframe and zoom in here, and actually, uh, let me actually go to a camera view, and let me enable my markup tools, which are new to Moto 14. Uh, you can see right here we have this vertex, and uh, it's actually causing the surface here to overlap with the strip. So here's the strip right here, and then here's the surface kind of overlapping it. So one way to fix that is just to uh, select the surface that's responsible for uh, kind of trimming uh, the top plane here, uh, which I happen to know is trim ZX001. It's this plane right here. And all we're going to do is kind of increase the fusion subdivs. So we're going to make it a little bit more dense, and that should solve this. So in the item properties, I'll come over to Fusion Subdivs. It's currently set to 2, and I'll just increase that to 3, and that solves that issue. So I'll now uh, disable that mesh so it's no longer visible. And I can see another issue here. So again, I can go to my camera view. I'll go to the first frame. And it's actually... Uh, these strips right here. So if I make the strips visible so that I can select them, uh, and I select the strip, that'll bring up the strip properties, or the fusion strip uh, tools. Uh, you can see we're getting some really uh, bad strips here. And the strip width right now is one millimeter. Even if I decrease that to something like 200 uh, mic micrometers, uh, it, it's still actually there. Let me actually go to the perspective view, and you can see there's still some overlapping there. So I'm going to put that back to one millimeter, and I'll show you how this can be solved. Uh, because this is actually going to occur for each of these channels here. Uh, I have ten kind of subtractive channels, and each one of them has these tight corners here, which is having that overlapping issue. So with this first strip selected, I'm going to come over to the Fusion Strips properties and just toggle the borders. And that gives us a green and a purple uh, kind of curve surrounding our initial strip curve. And if I come over here to the actual strip uh, item properties, uh, you can see we have smoothing G and smoothing P. The G and the P stand for green and purple. So you can smooth each side of these strips. And here we have the toggle borders button. It's the same as the toggle borders button in the fusion strips popover. So it just does the same thing. So if I examine this, you can see that the green uh, curve actually loops in on itself. It's a little bit difficult to see, but that loop is what's causing this overlapping. The purple side seems to be okay. So we have these green and purple buttons here uh, with the minuses and the pluses. Uh, this just, uh, the pluses increase uh, the smoothing, the minuses decrease the smoothing, and you have uh, a way to increase and decrease for both the purple and the green side. As I mentioned, the purple side doesn't need to change, uh, so I'll just focus on the green side. The larger plus uh, will uh, increase the smoothing in increments of 5, and the smaller plus sign will uh, increase in increments of 1. So if I just click on the larger plus, you can see the smoothing G uh, input field will switch from 1 to probably 6. Let me just make sure I click that. Uh, and then I'll do it again. That's 11. And one more time. And now it's nice and smooth. We no longer have that overlap. Now 16 is probably too large, so I can either uh, change it manually here, or I can use the minus to just decrease it uh, by a couple, so that the green smoothing is now set to 14. And that appears to have worked on both of the sides. So if I manually decrease that back to 1, you'll see we get the overlapping. And increasing it to something like 14 uh, solves that. So now we have to do the same for the other 
uh, channels. Uh, instead of doing it one by one, we can just uh, toggle off the borders and then click Select Sibling Substrips. That brings up this popover. Uh, we don't want to update the strips, we just want to select them. So I'll select No. And that selects the other strips. And then I'm just going to change the smoothing to 14 because we know that works. And there we go. Now that one is fixed. So now let's say we want to increase the number of these channels or these uh, tread troughs. So right now we have 10. Uh, this is created uh, procedurally, so I can always come over here to my compound trim locator and enable uh, my tread array. And if I open up the mesh operation stack and check out the tool pipe, we have an array generator. And here we have a count of 10 in the X axis. If I increase that uh, to something like 12, we'll have more uh, subtractive elements. Now the reason these are subtractive, even though uh, the wireframe is green, which usually implies additive or primary, uh, is because I'm using a compound trim. Uh, so that kind of reverses things. Uh, there are videos about compound trims um, elsewhere, uh, which I'm not gonna get into today. So let me just toggle off the visibility. So we just increased the number of uh, trims, and it might look good at first glance, but if I zoom in here, let me just go to my camera and I'll go to frame two. You can see now the, uh, the strips are overlapping the surface. So these strips are competing with the surface area. So if I go back to my perspective view, you can see it's kind of similar to how the initial problem we solved was the surface overlapping the strip. Now we have the strip overlapping both the surface and uh, an adjacent strip. So to fix this, all we have to do is decrease the strip size. So if I select this strip here, and then let me just hold shift to bring up the fusion strips popover. I'll select sibling substrips. Again, I'll select no. And now I just want to change the strip width for all of these selected to be, let's say 0.25 millimeters, which is 250 micrometers. And now that is uh, fixed. So now it's no longer uh, overlapping badly. Now, because we added extra troughs, we might have some new uh, overlapping here for the new uh, strips that were added. And it looks like it's gonna be these two. There's overlapping and this side is fine. So let me just change the smoothing on the green side to 14. And that should fix that. And again, if you wanna ha have a look at the actual um, colored curves, you can just enable toggle borders. There we go. Okay. So now let me look at this without the wireframe. I'll hide the strips and select the fusion item and toggle the wireframe. Now this looks okay, but what if we want these strips right here to be uh, the same width as these strips up here, just so there's a little bit more uh, sort of design cohesion. I'll enable the wireframe and I'll enable the strips. Now I'm able to select this strip here and if I select loop B, which is all of the uh, strips that are related to this strip, and I'll click no because I don't want to update anything. Uh, it's accidentally selecting these right here. So let me actually try that again and this time I'll select loop A. There we go, that's what I wanted. And I just want to control click on these strips because I don't want to affect these. And now if I change the strip width to match the strip width at the top, which was 250 micrometers, now it's matching a little bit more. But we've introduced a, a different problem. So that problem can be seen if I disable strips, select the fusion item, toggle the wireframe, and you can see where uh, these top strips are meeting the side strip. Uh, the difference is, is too great. Uh, this strip is too wide and this strip is too th thin and they're not really um, uh, adjoining or uh, meeting uh, correctly. 
So I should be able to select a strip here, but for some reason, I'm not able to. I can select all of the surrounding strips, but there should be a strip right here. And the reason it's not there is because there's not enough um, geometry, or there's not enough density in the, uh, the two source trim meshes that are supposed to create the strip. Now, there's a couple ways to address that. I could select this strip and this strip, and I could come down to uh, the density here, and it's set to three. I can just set that to two and apply density, and that will make this area more dense. Sometimes that allows me to add a strip, but I'm actually not going to do it that way. Um, I'm actually going to make both of these source items more dense. I'm going to adjust the strip, and then I'm going to reduce the density of the source items. So this increase in density uh, of the fusion subdivs is going to be temporary. So this top piece is controlled by the initial uh, mesh that we adjusted. So that's this one right here. I'll just increase that from three to, maybe I'll go as high as, I'll keep this at four for now. And then I know the side trim is controlled by this uh, kind of curved plane. And that fusion subdiv is two. So if I increase that to three or four, that should make this plane more dense. I'll do four. And if I hide that now, and let's see if I have a strip that I can select. So I still don't have a strip that I can select. I could try um, updating the strip item, but before I do that, let me just increase this from four to five and see what happens. So still nothing. So let's try to hold control F to bring up the Fusion Pie menu and create or update the strip items and see what happens. There we go. So now we have strips here. And if I select this strip and select the sibling substrips, I can now uh, change the width from one millimeter to 250 micrometers. There we go. And now I can reduce uh, the fusion subdivs back down to two, which is the default. And then on this one, we set it to four. I'll set this one to three. I can't go down to two because that's the initial uh, one that we set to solve this area. So that has to be a subdiv of three. And now if I look at this uh, without the wireframe, oops. It should look pretty good uh, without errors. And it looks like there are some errors here. And that's just because uh, these, uh, these strips were never uh, reduced. So let me just reduce these to 250 uh, micrometers. And let me see if there's any others. Here's another one. So we have an issue here. So I'll just reduce this one as well from one millimeter to 250 micrometers. There we go. So now let's look at this with just the uh, uh, default shaded mode. So there we go. Now the, the final thing is sometimes when you're adjusting these strips um, you can have problems and things could get, could get a little bit uh, hairy. You can always just select uh, the strip items folder, and if you delete them, uh, it will just reset everything um, to prior to having strips. Now in this case it broke uh, my fusion here, um, but that's one way uh, to just go back to reset everything. Uh, now let me just experiment with that real quick. Let me delete this again, and I'm going to reduce the, uh, the number of arrays real quick to see if that that's the cause of that break. So we'll go back from 12 to 10. Yeah, and that was the issue. So as a failsafe, you can always reduce your arrays and, uh, and delete your fusion strips. Uh, so I hope these quick fixes prove to be useful to you all. Uh, thanks so much for watching.